so we've got this shape. This is the basic shape. Um, what if I wanted to put in, for instance, a uh, like a dog bone or something here so that my, my drill bit can actually cut that. Um, I can do that as well. And I'm going to say the width of my drill bit is 3.2-ish millimeters. Um, and of course, I chose here a two-point circle. So I pick one side and I tell it uh, how far I want it to have a diameter of. And then I have, well, that's not technically a dog bone, but that's, it's a relief for the bit. Um, there actually is add-ins, uh, is, there are add-ins you can use, which um, will create a dog bone for you, but uh, that's, that's beyond the scope of this. So now that I have this, how do I create one solid design? Well, we're gonna use the trim tool. And I'm just going to use this hotkey T as I do this as well. But I'm going to click Trim, and it breaks up every line segment into where it intersects with something else. And so what I'm going to do is click on the things that I want to disappear. So I don't want that. I'm going to hit T, select this one, T, select that one, T, select this one, in the middle, T. I'm going to zoom in with my scroll wheel. I want to get rid of this and these two uh, corner pieces there to give that smooth transition. And down here, I want to get rid of the interior portion of that cut. So now I have a nice design. In fact, these are additions to the design um, that I just made. So um, we can kind of move this around and, and check it out. Uh, when we're happy with this design, we're going to click Stop Sketch. And that stops the two-dimensional editing area. If you ever need to look at it again, it's visible under here. And you can turn it on and off. But if you need to edit it, just right-click and Edit Sketch. And so at this point, now we need to extrude. So I'm going to collect, uh, click on the faces that I would like to extrude. I'm going to hold Control as I do this, so I can select multiple faces. I'm going to click here, Extrude, and that's Create Extrusion. Um, and as I click it, uh, I unselected one of them, but that's okay. I'll just do them independently. I'm going to make these 12.5 millimeters tall. And as I did that, now I'm only looking at what's called a body. And so a new entry over here has shown up. It's a body. I can turn it on or off in visibility. But I need to turn my sketch back on because I'm also going to extrude here 12.5 millimeters. So now I have the sides. I want to bring this central area up as well. But I don't want to quite make it as tall as the other sides, I want to make it three millimeters. And there we go. So I have this design now. Um, and if you look here, this has got a wood pattern on it. There's a really easy thing to do here. We can just go to render. And we're going to select the appearance. We're going to select the material. I'm going to turn off the downloadable materials so it'll only show me the things I've got downloaded. I'm going to do unfinished wood and I'm going to select pine. Uh, you could use whatever wood you would like, um, oak, pine, whatever you'd like, but um, we can use whichever. Uh, and then once you've done this, you can click back over here, go back to model, and there you go. You've got your 3D design and your uh, material selected. After we do this, we need to save just to make sure we don't lose anything. And now we're going to go into some of these other options. So there's animation, simulation. You can do all sorts of really cool things like creating hinges and um, connections and constraints. And you can make assemblies of parts that move and how they interact with one another. Mimics physics in the real world. 
Um, and then you can do simulations like stress tests on different pieces. Like for instance, if you're making a beam, can it handle a certain amount of pressure here? And how does the pressure uh, kind of spread out over the whole piece? And we're going to go to CAM because we're going to actually go into creating this as something that we can use on a CNC machine. So I'm looking here uh, in CAM. First thing we have to do is make a new setup. And a setup basically describes your, uh, your entire job. So I'm going to say I'm doing milling. And... Uh, you can select your X, Y, and Z coordinates where you want the mill to start. Where, where are you going to start your, uh, when you start your job, where will your end mill be? So uh, this is at the very center, at the top of the material, the stock material. Um, many people choose to do the lower left hand side, and this is what I prefer actually. Um, that way whenever I'm looking top down, it's X and Y and it's at the very top of my material. Now, sometimes people like to actually zero off of the base, and you can do that so that you don't actually mill all the way through into your spoil board. Um, I haven't learned to do that in Fusion 360 yet, so I've only been doing the, uh, uh, the top area here. As far as the stock, if you don't really care what stock you're using or if you don't care where it's located in your stock material, uh, and by stock I mean the piece that you're cutting, um, you could say relative size box and then basically just move your router around and cut out. If you want to do multiples of these in one big block, um, you can cut like four of them out in one piece of wood, then keep it relative move your machine after you've cut this piece and reset your axes to zeros uh, and then cut from there at your new origin on your machine. But you could also say fixed box size and this will say that you have a piece of wood that's maybe 150 millimeters by 70 millimeters for instance. And so you can see here now you can see the size of, of that piece of wood that I'm using. And what if I don't want to cut that far away from the edge. I'm going to edit my setup and uh, go back to stock. I'm going to change my offset. Uh, actually, I'm going to change my offset here um, because I don't want it to be placed in the center of my piece. I want it to be offset um, from the left hand side over here. So I want to move my piece over here almost to the end. Uh, if I put zero then it should put it all the way at the end but I don't want to put zero because I want my end mill to cut this piece cleanly. So what I'm going to do is actually select um, there's zero you can see what that looks like. I'm going to actually select um, about 3.2 millimeters which is about the width of my eighth inch end mill. And so you could see here how this will look on your piece of wood. Um, and then again you can you can kind of change the the height as well. See how thick the piece is and how this is centered in the center of that piece? Well that doesn't make a lot of sense really. So in your stock you could say you want uh, our piece was twelve and a half centimeters tall. Maybe that's the thickness of our piece of material. And if it isn't, that's okay. We can we can say, okay, well maybe that was 20, but instead of doing it at the center, I want there to be zero offset. So that it's going to cut all the way out this big thick piece of material here. It's only going to leave me with this design that I like here that I created. So you could do it in multiple ways. So I'm going to say I'm cutting it out of a piece that's the exact same thickness as what I'm using here. So once you do this, again, save. And now we can create our job. Um, so what I'm going to say is I'm going to create a 2D contour. And this is going to cut out basically the outline of this 
design. So let's try that. I'm going to say there's no coolant, so I'm going to disable that. And it shouldn't matter because my machine doesn't have coolant. It doesn't support it, so it knows better. Uh, then I'm going to select which tool I want to use. And I'm going to use a 1 8 inch uh, flat end mill. And this is just a little design. It shows you what it should look like. Uh, again, coolant disabled. Um, and you can keep this. Uh, I don't have a spindle control speed device. I just turn it on and adjust it manually. So I'm not going to worry about that. Um, you can change these uh, feed rates and things of that sort uh, if you'd like to. But I, I find that the defaults are usually pretty good. Next, it's going to ask me, well, what should I cut with this end mill? So I'm going to click on uh, my contour selection. I want to select this outline. Um, and you could say stock contours, and you could say, you know, this is the stock material. Um, but if you just select this, it's called a chain. It's multiple uh, line segments kind of chained together to create a solid uh, uh, box shape. That will work in this case. It doesn't have to be a box shape. It could be any kind of contour. Um, something that I like to use is also uh, tabs. And these tabs, uh, as you're cutting a contour, as you're cutting this piece out of the larger piece of material, once you get to the very last bit, it will actually break loose and start rattling around and you can damage the piece by moving the end mill if it's not finished cutting. So these tabs are little areas where it's going to just kind of, on that last layer, it's going to go and jump and leave a little peg connecting this to the rest of the material. Um, if I have a normal regular shape like this rectangle, I'll just do this uh, automatic tab positioning by distance. And you can actually change this to rectangular or triangular tabs. The triangular ones are a little bit less material, a little easier to cut out at the very end of your job. Uh, you cut those out manually, um, or you could do rectangular, either one. Um, the positioning, if I have an interesting shape like this, I, would, I wouldn't want a tab to be like on this interior corner. That would be really hard to cut out. And it might place it by there automatically if it's doing it just by, you know, uh, uh, automatically placing them. So you can say at points and you can select exactly where you want these tabs to be. Um, again, since this is just a regular shape, I'm going to leave it alone. Uh, oh, and if you didn't change your X, Y, and Z in the beginning in your preferences, you can actually change that now um, by selecting which one of these is your X, Y, and Z, and uh, like click your Z axis and click that up is your Z axis, for instance. So uh, you could do that. Um, I'm not changing it because I, I always have all my jobs set up like this in my preferences. Uh, here it shows you the heights. So the clearance height is going to come all the way up to here and then move quickly and so forth. So the defaults on this are usually pretty good for me. I want to do multiple passes. I don't want this to cut a plunge cut directly 12 and a half millimeters down and then cut all the way around in one go. That would be too much. Um, so what I'd like to do is um, I'm going to do conventional milling instead of climb milling. Climb milling will give us a cleaner edge, but it's not really that good for removing material. Um, so we want to do a conventional uh, milling. Um, And we can do multiple depths. So I want to do, um, this is 12 and a half millimeters deep. I want to do about 1.5 millimeters deep per pass. And that's about half of my um, end mills diameter. And that's a good rule of thumb. You never want to plunge too deep because then you end up putting too much load on the end mill and you can break it. So you want to usually do layers like a half of that width of your bit or, or less usually. Um, and if I put that in there, it will automatically uh, 
do the rest of these like calculations and how it should do the tool paths. So if you go to stock to leave, it'll actually not cut out this final shape. It'll cut out up to 0.1 millimeters away and then you have to make a whole new cutting uh, job just to finish that off. And that's okay if you want to do something really like you want to quickly cut out the the general shape and then come in with a um, a climb uh, mill and clean up the edges really nice. Um, but in in this case and in most cases, I'm just looking for a quick and dirty get this shape out of here. And so we don't even really need to do that. We'll leave that off, and that way, if we don't check that, it'll mill exactly to this shape. Um, we already talked about the multiple passes, multiple depths, um, linking, we don't need to do that. And OK. And it generates the paths for us. And so this, and you can even see the little uh, tabs it'll create for us. This is a uh, full path. And what I've done here is um, I'm simulating. So you right click here and uh, go to simulate and it pops up uh, this little box and usually uh, you can check and see you know how long it might take to machine that shape in the display usually it doesn't have this checked by default but this shows you your stock material and how it will mill away and you can make this transparent and watch it as it cuts and you can click play and literally watch it mill away um, the material and you can then drag your mouse and uh, you know have it go into different pieces of the uh, of the job, speed it up, slow it down, whatnot. Um, and if I click off a transparent, you can see it's actually, this is what it would look like if it were cutting a piece of wood, for instance. And so um, you have that. So that's your, your profile. Now let's copy this and paste it because I want to make sure that I have the same stock but I don't want to do the same exact contour um, actually let's not copy that you want to copy the job so we're gonna duplicate this job here and then in here we're gonna delete the job uh, the actual mill so in order to select from this job which was the contour by itself and this one which is going to be used for milling out that pocket we're going to make sure we activate this by clicking right there so now I can say let's go to a 3D pocket clearing I'm going to select the tool the same 8th inch flat end mill I'm going to select my geometry now what I want is I want to mill out that pocket right here so I'm going to select the pocket Oop, there we go and again it's going to do the chain um, we're going to leave the rest of this as it is heights uh, leave as is passes we can uh, change this now notice it says stock to leave is on by default you want to take that off because again if you if you don't if you just mouse over it'll show you what it means uh, if you don't have stock to leave then you cut all the way to the actual line that you see highlighted in yellow there. If you do have stock to leave, it will actually leave whatever this distance is off the edges. And then you'd have to make a whole new job to come and clean that up. So let's not worry about that. Um, it's a good idea to put on smoothing. Uh, and then um, ramp. ramp. There's different ways of ramping into your job. And so um, you can kind of plunge cut outside of your job and ramp into it. Depends on what you're, you're going for. Usually a smooth profile or a helix profile are the easiest to, to go with. Um, uh, I don't think you need to mess with any of that. We're doing multiple passes here. And just click OK and it will calculate your milling job for that pocket and you can see that it's it's going to take quite a few passes the different colored lines represent different types of movements so your um, 
your spiral uh, or your helix is located in red. Um, your actual cutting is in blue. And if you zoom in, you can see green. That's called what your that's what's called your lead in, lead out. And the yellow is the um, tool paths for if it's moving quickly over your material and um, up from a previous cut. So after we've done that, and we can simulate it and see again the statistics about 15 minutes to mill this and we can see it in the stock and we can play and watch it mill away the material and so you can continue to make sure that will work test it out now at this point there's a couple of different things we want to do if I were to export this as is what will happen is oh and usually I rename these so this will be profile and pocket. If we default uh, export these, what we'll have is it will cut the outlines, then it will come back in and do the pocket. That, in my experience, is not a great idea because if you accidentally cut too deep and you cut those tabs too thin, it can't support the forces as the, the bit is milling through this bulk of material here. So usually I like to move this one on top of the contour. That way it'll do the pocket first. Now we can do what's called the post process. And if we click there, it's going to pull up this, um, uh, this little window where you can choose what type of machine you're trying to generate ex uh, an exported file for, G-code file. So, um, I've got a smoothie board for my CNC machine, so that's what I'll use. You could do it for shop bots, you could do it for um, Roland machines, um, you need the pocket NC, which is the uh, multi axis mill, the other mill, um, and there's other popular, and, and of course, there's uh, Linux CNC, Mach 3, Mach 2, and um, Akuma, Omax, all these you know different brands of mills, different models and, and whatnot. So you choose the one that will work for your job and uh, you can name it whatever you'd like to name it. Test mill and um, that's pretty much it. The first time you run this it's actually going to um, and I'm just going to save this in my example file. Here's some of the other things that I've worked on. Uh, the socket is the um, dust shroud on my mill. I broke a piece, had to fix it. And you can see I've got multiple things. One is just the pocket, and one is the pocket with the profile. And right now, we're only exporting the pocket because that's the one we had selected. Um, if we wanted to do both of these at the same time, we would click on operations and then we would export. And so it's important to note, if you think you're cutting out the profile and then you're going to reset your XYZ to zero and then open a new job to cut out the, the pocket, um, you got to make sure you don't move the machine or hit, hit the e-stop or mess anything up like that. Um, but otherwise, if you do it, like I said here, do the pocket first, then the profile, export all operations, it will do um, the pocket first, then the outline, just like um, just like with this. So actually, let me do that. I'm going to select operations, and from the operations menu, I'm going to select them both whenever I do this. Let's try. But let's go ahead and take a look at it in uh, in our our code. My pronter face which is what I'm using to uh, send G-code to my machine. It will load the file and we can move it around. Ah, so it does have both the pocket and the profile. And so uh, it did export both of them, it just didn't comment it in the code. Um, something else that I've noticed some people try to do is uh, when you're looking at the code here um, in brackets you may need to delete the G28 line at the beginning and also at the very end 
uh, G28 will move your machine to the home buttons and if your machine doesn't have home buttons then you will break stuff so um, I have the smoothie board and in my configuration I don't have home buttons in it and it knows that so it ignores that line but typically if you have a, a, a standard um, g-code interpreter you're gonna want to delete that if you don't have home buttons um, but that's pretty much it so that's uh, from the beginning to the end how to set